Back in October of 2023, I decided I wanted every Alpha Pokemon. For those who don't know, Alpha Pokemon were introduced in Pokemon Legends Arceus. They are the biggest possible size a Pokemon can be and are indicated with a red mark when caught and red glowing eyes in game. I decided to spend basically a year of my life playing Pokemon Legends Arceus and getting every single one. What up everyone, True Blue here. And that's right, today I'm actually going over the story of how I obtained every alpha Pokemon legitimately in this game. Now again, I to preface, this was a year's worth <laughs> of work getting these Pokemon. This wasn't even originally gonna be like a video that was just like, hmm, I wonder if this would be fun. And uh, it was a roller coaster of emotions for me. And you'll see that throughout this video, of course. But I want to share that experience with you. And for those who want to actually get these Pokemon after this video, and or maybe you want a specific Alpha Pokemon, whatever the case, I will be making a guide later on that'll help streamline the process, go over the best way to catch all of them. Basically, just help you guys out so you don't have to do the work I did. And the suffering I did. We'll get to that. Anyway, I'm going to hop right into it, but if you want to see me do more kind of content like this, let me know uh, by hitting the subscribe button. It helps the channel a ton. Thanks for all the support again. You guys are just the best. And let's jump back to October 2023. So these are screenshots that I took on October 8th, 2023 at one in the morning. Did I really start this at one in the morning? What I did on this original day was I sat and organized eight boxes with all the Pokemon I caught in my original playthrough of the game. A lot of these were the static encounters or just random Pokemon that show up a ton that I ended up catching. So these are all the alphas and I organized them by dex number. That is national dex number to be precise. That's kind of how my brain just goes about thinking about Pokemon. So I got them all and I actually realized before starting that a lot of them I ended up catching without realizing. For example, I have the Holoshawott line, almost all of the new Pokemon that were introduced in this game. I did end up catching one Porygon, which is very important. And yeah, this also was after the Massive Mass Outbreak DLC, which made a lot of Pokemon a lot easier to get as alphas. So I didn't think this challenge was going to be all too difficult. Now on this quest, I needed some people to help me out. So I decided to take my main Legends RCS team to help me on this journey along with an old classic, and that is my original Gengar from way back in 2012. That Pokemon has been with me for years, and I decided that was gonna be the Pokemon to help me out alongside the new generation of Pokemon. So what I did first was just kind of round up all the Pokemon I was missing, which this kind of just took me a month, basically. So throughout that month, I ended up catching basically almost all of them. The only Pokemon I ended up really missing was Zubat, Growlithe, the Magnemite line, all of the Eevees, <laughs> most of the Porygon line, Togepi, the Fossil Pokemon, the Burmy line, Terupi line, Munchlax, Weavile, and that's it. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. Uh, obviously, just the later evolutions were kind of annoying, but besides the Pokemon I listed, they ended up actually being not too bad and relatively simple to get. It was a lot of just kind of going about and getting lucky. A lot of this ended up being luck-based because alpha Pokemon that aren't set encounters or boosted with outbreaks are just luck. Now for the Pokemon I mentioned having trouble with, I'll go down pseudo national dex order, kind of just the easiest. Uh, for Zubat and Growlithe, it was because their eyes are covered. Uh, Growlithe can slightly be shown at certain angles, but sometimes it's just difficult to see with its body being primarily red. Uh, it just it just gets hard to see the eyes when they're glowing red. So that one I had trouble with, and it just took a while to spawn. Zubat doesn't have eyes, which is brought up in the game. So how do you get an alpha if you can't see the alpha? Every single Zubat that I looked at, I hit ZL. This allows you to look at the Pokemon directly, and it will tell you if it's an alpha or not. I don't remember if this is a feature I unlock later on or not, but that is what I did for like about an hour, and then I ended up finding an Alpha Zubat because it's a very common Pokemon, so it was just kind of luck. But 
once those two were settled, it wasn't too bad from there. Again, most of these Pokemon were very easy. A lot of them, you end up finding kind of uh, earlier alpha forms, for example, like a Psyduck, so you don't really have to go to your way to find them. You could just catch multiples of those and evolve them later on. So the actual grind for a lot of these was very simple, uh, but it did take me about a month. A little bit less, because I just got lucky with some of them, but some of them did take a while. I remember Ponyta took me a while. I remember Monferno took me a while. Uh, for some reason, Nosepass, even though I think he's a static encounter, I just didn't remember that when I was doing this. But for the baby Pokemon, it was just hard getting some of them to spawn. Togepi was the first one I hunted. Um, a lot of them, I just got unfortunate luck with getting them to actually spawn in. Uh, it So... It took a while, but eventually I did get the Alpha Tokopi. Again, it's it's more of a patience thing. It's more of a test of patience. It's not too bad. For Eevee, I will highly recommend to not farm wild Eevees. Don't grind for the Eevees or Eeveelutions, because you don't need to. You will get them naturally. I promise you if you do this run properly, you'll get them naturally. Why? Because I did. I got them naturally. I got so many naturally. I have a box. Let's, let's just scroll through. Here's every single extra alpha Pokemon uh, that I thought had a decency of being rare. Not really the rarest, but like pseudo rare. These are all extra alphas that I didn't need. I have two Sylveons and three extra Eevees. Those are the ones I chose to cut. All right. Don't grind those out. Why am I talking about Eevee? Uh, cause Eevee sucks. Eevee sucks to spawn in this game. So, I waited for the time distortions. And we'll get to those later! For now, I want to talk about the first big headache in this run. The tree encounters. Burmy and Cherubi. Mothum is a static encounter. Awesome. Burmy, Warmadam, Cherubi, Cherum are locked behind stupid shaking trees in specific spawn locations. Now, can you get multiple to spawn per uh, time you enter an area? Yes. Uh, heck, Burmy, I think, spawns in almost every tree. Uh, Cherupi is specific ones, but if you just look it up, it's not too bad. But every single time you enter an area... There's a chance for a Pokemon to be in a tree. Then, those are separate tables of the Pokemon that are in them. If you get lucky, you might get a Burmy, you might get a Wormadam, you might get a Cherupi. But then you gotta roll for the chance of being an Alpha. I don't think I gotta do the math or explain the numbers to tell you why that is annoying. Okay, this took me an extra month and a half. I am not kidding. I got almost every alpha Pokemon within a month, and then these four Pokemon took nearly a month and a half alone to get them all. I decided to start with the Burmy line, because there's just more opportunities, and I did not want to grind out all of the forms, because I like to value my time as important. That is why I've, I have completed national decks. So... I just took one, called it there, but the same method would be used to get them all, and I was not doing that, so. After a while, I ended up getting Wormadam, ended up getting a Burmy, everything was holly jolly. Then, the grind for Cherupi started. This Pokemon alone took so many resets. When I tell you, I got so familiar with the tree route that I would take to get all of the trees Cherubi would spawn in that I had it muscle memorized to the point I was no longer looking at the game. I quite literally would autopilot my hands, or heck, I would autopilot one hand, claw gripping my controller to move my character in just the right way to reach every single tree that I wanted to, and I would know if I got a Cherubi because of the sound. Or a cherub, because the sound. Then I would check. And I would get disappointed for weeks on end. 
because it never had glowing red eyes, it was never an alpha Pokemon. But then one faithful week, one beautiful week in December. Actually, no, it was January. We've already reached it. We've already reached the next year. One beautiful week in January, there there were, in the same week, Cherupi and Cherum, finally in my grasp, it was beautiful. Art almost, I thought it was done. I thought it was done with the Coordinate Highlands. I've been there for months now, hunting these stupid plants. And then, I discovered the worst Pokemon to hunt. Space-time distortions. STDs for short. For those who don't know, space-time distortions are a stupid, dumb mechanic added to this game. What happens is every five minutes, you have a percent chance, a small percent chance, for a space-time distortion, which has three random Pokemon in them from a table. They're usually the starters or some of these exclusive Pokemon. The Porygon line, Magnemite line, uh, original Sneasel, whatever. On top of that, you also had tons of Pokemon spawning, including Eevee. Because you're going to be getting so many space-time distortions through these next batches of Pokemon, that is why I said wait on Eevee. When I tell you, Eevee spawns in every single area with the evolutions, according to them, you'll get your Alpha Eevees without trying. Just keep attending the space-time distortions, run around a bit, they'll spawn in, catch it, you're good. But the space-time distortion exclusives... Ooh, buddy. I don't know if you realized, I said this took almost a year and a half. And if you look, we're currently in January. I didn't finish this until last month. It was that bad. The first ones I started with were the fossils. I figured they would be the easiest because there was four of them. Statistically speaking, I had the best chance because all the other ones were three stage Pokemon I was looking for. I had two sets of two stages, four Pokemon. Maybe it's a better luck. I was severely mistaken and really wish I did not do this challenge. After about another month of grinding, I ended up getting my shield on and I ended up getting a Bastiodon shortly after. All was left was Cranidos and Rampartov. You know, we're in like March now. I have now grinded this game so long. I have spent so much time playing this game, idling, waiting for a space-time distortion. Let me explain how these STDs work in a bit more detail. Every five minutes, you have a chance, but you are not guaranteed them. You are only guaranteed them after 40 minutes of waiting, and this timer only goes down when your character is not in battle, when animations are happening, when your character's basically just roaming around doing nothing. So I had to sit with my Switch, my controller by my side, for hours, for a chance, for a chance of one of the three spawns to be this one Pokemon. He never showed. He never showed. Now I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but in the time it took for me to get this Kranidos, which ended up taking six months of grinding for two Pokemon. I not only purchased in 100% Kirby Triple Deluxe, I purchased and just finished Donkey Kong Country Returns on the 3DS. I modded my 3DS, played through Pokemon Yellow, Blue, and Crystal, played through Sengoshi, the Yokawa Sengoshi, played through Kamen Rider, the 3DS game, I don't remember the name. On top of that, I played for Omega Ruby an extra three times for Deoxys, which means I did the stupid post game. I had three other extra teams just for one Pokemon. 
and it's six months of grinding and playing all of those other games on top of other releases, just work, my life in general, all of that. I did not get a single, single Kratodos. It took four months for one Rampartos to spawn and then another three showed up. I have never felt so defeated in my life till I tried getting one comically large Kranidos. This thing is the bait of my existence. Oh my god. The pop-off. The absolute pop-off I had when I got that thing. It was like 11 at night and I was cheering. It was like I won the Super Bowl. It was like I had a gold medal at the Olympics. I did it. I achieved the impossible. I got a Kranidos with a comically large forehead. For anyone who wants to attempt this, if you want every alpha Pokemon, pre-plan. And I, what I mean pre-plan, I mean set aside some stuff that take a, takes a lot of time. Um, some things you can do while waiting. I ended up not just playing games. I did a lot of stuff in the time, and obviously I wasn't constantly playing Legends Arceus. This took me, again, almost a year's worth of time, but in relative speaking, maybe three months of those, I wasn't actually playing that, this game. I was doing other stuff. I have a life. Shocker. I not only played those games, I organized my childhood Lego toy bin. I went through brick by brick and finished organizing it. Before I got him, I have all of the model kits in shelving behind me. I reorganized that too. How many videos, how much things did I make between last October and this October? Just picture all of that work, all of the things I talked about that I explained in those videos that were so much work on my end, so much time I spent doing things. That was all during this. I can't stress enough how long this took me. The level of multitasking I have achieved since I started this challenge. Incredible! I've been able to do multiple things at once. And my brain, I swear, I have ADHD sometimes. Like, I can't focus. Now, it's incredible! Thanks to the stupid Kranidos! My life hasn't been the same since I finished Pokemon Legends RCS and caught every alpha Pokemon. I can promise you that. And this is only the beginning. Because again, what are we at? We still have like three months left. Right now, we are in August. We still have... Three other Pokemon to grind to time distortions. <sighs> Lucky for me, for some reason, I got lucky. And in those final two months, my blood, sweat, and tears, the time I can't get back, God had a favorite, and it was me. Because in one week, he granted me my Weavile. Obviously, there is a standard Sneasel spawn of the new Hisuian Sneasel. So why don't you grind the one from Johto? I just needed one for Weavile. Then came the Porygon line. That took two weeks, actually. Again, I already had this Porygon to start. Lucky me, I had one per week. Awesome, right? Then came the Magnemite line. This guy, in actuality, only took about three to four weeks, but due to my on-off playing, it just felt like it took so much longer, and I ended up getting the Magnemite and Magneton within a week. The same week of each other, I ended up getting two of the Pokemon I needed anyway. Like, it, again, it wasn't that crazy, it's just the time felt like it was so much longer. And I can't stress enough how much time in actuality was spent doing nothing in this game. I, according to my Switch, the recorded hours that have been added to my playtime from grinding, 350 hours of sitting and doing nothing. 
for like eight Pokemon. I figured out how to get Yokai Watch Puni Puni on my American iPhone before I got a goddamn Kranidos. I watched two whole copyright seasons before this thing ended, and one of them was ongoing. It was still airing. You know, being someone who watches a lot of Pokemon content creators who go on these videos and explain how they work on things for months, I always kind of thought they over-exaggerated a bit. Um, obviously, a lot of the shiny videos I understood, but a lot of them, they felt a bit crazy with the task that were at hand, you know? Uh, and, you know, I signed up for something that seemed so mundane, getting comically large Pokemon. Then I discovered what an STD was. Then I discovered how long it took to get one. Then I discovered how, how difficult it was for one to, to be rid of you. It was in the area for so long. It never went away when you wanted it to. I quite literally do not understand <laughs> why Kranidos took so long. Genuinely. Heck, I there I think you saw there was like an extra. I really got lucky that day for some reason. But yeah. I, I did it. I have every alpha Pokemon, and I'm proud of it. You know what? This was glorified a year of patience. Absolute patience. And I almost considered starting to stream. Starting to stream this, because I thought that'd be awesome, right? I'm doing a challenge run, I'll stream it. At the very least, I'll stream the last Pokemon. Let me show you what I was looking at for the majority of this run. I will show you exactly what was happening in Legends Arceus. Obviously, you know I'm doing stuff, as I said, on the side, of course, but what was the game doing? What was happening in game for months? Yeah, that was it. That was, of course, sped up because, you know, it was boring. Very boring. That's why I did so much during my time waiting. But honestly, it was a fun experience. <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. I just kind of like collecting things. I like Pokemon. Um, sitting here, being able to do stuff and feel productive while feeling not productive. Grinding Pokemon Legends Arceus, I don't know, it's fun. And I'm gonna be honest, I kind of miss having something going on in the background all the time. I'm gonna miss not having a constant thing in the background to multitask and do. Uh, you know, now I kind of just don't have anything to grind video game wise. <laughs> so I can just chill. It is weird, because again, last year of my life, I have sat here doing one thing with my TV yelling at me when a STD shows up. It was interesting, to say the least. A lot has happened in my life since I started this back in October. Um, back of this channel, not even remotely close to the way it was when I started this, but... I wouldn't take back any of it. I think it was fun. And I would recommend... Well, I wouldn't recommend anyone do this. Um, if you're interested in doing this, I would say go for it. Have fun. Do what you want. No one can stop you. No one can stop you. If you want a Pokemon with a certain ribbon, certain mark, whatever, no one can stop you. No one can stop you. Go for it. I do feel drained from kind of venting out <laughs> my months of frustration from the space time distortions, but there is a lot more I have to say on them, but I'll save that for the guide where that information will be of use and it won't just me 
me complaining because I could do a lot of that. I could do a lot of that right now, all right? I gotta do a lot of that. But I'm not going to. I did actually consider giving up this challenge by this point, honestly. Once I kind of realized what I was getting into, once I hit the stage time distortions, I really did consider stopping it. But then I got the idea to do it for you guys. Uh, I got the idea to get them all and show them off to you guys. I only ended up spending all this time because I thought you guys would appreciate it. And I know there are those of you out there who do think this was really cool, um, who would benefit from the guide that I'll be making soon enough and will just genuinely like this sort of stuff. And it makes me really happy that I've kind of made this very small part of the internet, like this little community of people with similar interests, of course. So um, people that I at least know look at my content and think, wow, you know, like that they can sit and watch that. There's something to enjoy. Um, so this video, along with the last one that was produced, really was for you guys at the end of the day. And I'm really glad to call myself a YouTuber. Uh, you guys really made it worth the while. All of that finally being said, finally being able to get this off my chest. I've been trying to keep this secretive uh, for you guys because I wanted to do a big surprise and a uh, part of me wishes I started streaming this. I think it would have been really fun if I just had this in the background, I did stuff with you guys, chatted with you guys. I think that would have been awesome, but fortunately it just didn't pan out that way. But if I do another challenge like this, um, if there is another challenge related thing like this that you guys can think of, Pokemon or not related, uh, just games I like or something, uh, let me know actually. I would love to do <laughs> live streams of me trying to complete some stupid challenge. But regardless, uh, plugging the, the comments and telling you to describe all of that aside, I wish you all a lovely day.